This is the story of Michael Blake, former paratrooper, one of the many ex-GIs who have found themselves drawn back to those places they had known during the war, seeking the old thrill of excitement, but never finding it. But Blake's was a strange story, different from most. Maybe you've heard it. Well, the end of it anyway. It hit the headlines at the time. That bewildering end up here at the village of saint Elzear in the rugged mountains of the south of France. The summer dawn comes quietly to the village perched here on the edge of the precipice. Father Goron, the village priest, always the first awake, was on his way to the church when suddenly the bells were ringing. The bells that had been silent ever since the disappearance of the gauntlet of St. Elzear, the famous green glove which had made this village an object of pilgrimage to the sick, the maimed, and the faithful for nearly a thousand years. To Father Goron, it meant that the gauntlet had come home, for the vow had been made that the bell should never ring again until it returned. But it wasn't there in the niche which had been empty so long. Why then did the bells ring? And who was ringing them? Nobody there. Only the dead man. Who is he? Did he ring the bell to say the gauntlet had come home? He was dead as it rang. Nobody was up there. Los Angeles, California, an American. So there it was, the miracle of the gauntlet that had come home with no one to bring it, of the bell that rang with no man alive to pull the rope, and of course, the mystery of the dead man. That was the end of the story. But this story had really begun many years earlier. August, 1944. The Allied Liberation of the South of France. One survivor reached the ground behind the German lines. Newspaper correspondent. 
I draw by the papers. Battle scenes, impressions. My name's Paul Rona. I see yours is Blake. Lieutenant Blake. How come a German speaks as good English? Who said I was German? No, what are you? I've changed passports so often, I've lost touch. I was educated in England. My mother was a Czech, my father was a Pole. In those days, the Poles were Russians, the Czechs were Austrians. So you work it out. The Americans are wasting an awful lot of ammunition. You need every shell you can get when the German 19th Army counterattacks at dawn. They're going to be pushed into the sea. Oh, yeah? Okay, you tell that to intelligence. Come on, let's go. Come on, I said, let's go. Determined, aren't you? You mind if I take this? Open it. I told you I sketched. Now, wait a minute. What else you got in there? Huh. It's a green glove. Something very valuable. Listen, Blake. If you let me go, it's yours. It's worth enough to make you rich for the rest of your life. Huh? Look at those gems. I told you I sketched. That's merely a sideline. In peacetime, I'm an art dealer. Antiques. I have a shop in London, Paris, even New York. You've probably heard of it. Rona's, close to Tiffany's. Never been there. Blake. Blake, this glove's worth a fortune if the old collector would be there. Come on, let's go. So you dropped from the plane. Don't worry. The underground has helped many others before you. There's a German here. Where is he? Nobody here, monsieur. I guess the shell must have got him. Hurry, please, hurry. Wait a minute. Germans are counterattacking. 19th Army. I've got to get a message through. A messenger will leave at once. You promise? I promise. Of course. Let others worry now. Pierre, help him. <laughs> 